doesn't mean you're gonna be perfect, doesn't mean you're never gonna mess up, but it means you will be ready to face whatever comes, come what may, come sickness, come hardship, come trial, come war, he will be with you. In the book of Matthew, Matthew's so clear on this. Matthew starts out his gospel and he introduces us to a name, a name that we call Jesus, usually around Christmas time. Emmanuel means God with us. Hopeless people living in darkness. And then God comes and he walks with them and he talks with them and it changes everything. And we're still singing about it 2,000 years later. And at the end of Matthew's book, the disciples are nervous. They know Jesus is leaving and they're not quite sure what to expect. And, and Matthew says it to us this way. He says, Jesus tells them, be sure of this. I am with you always. I will leave you my presence. It's the position that changes everything. And we see it here in verse 10. We're told the virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet. They go in with him. They're in his presence forever. They're simply continuing in the position that they've been in as they got ready. That's what heaven is. It's to be with him forever. And sometimes I've heard people say, you know, when I, when I get to the pearly gates, I'll choose him then. And yet I wonder that if a person chooses to live every day here in this life without him, without seeking his guidance, without his hope, without his presence in their life, what makes them think they're going to choose him then? In 2 Thessalonians 1, 9, and 10, we're told that's what, that's what hell is. Hell is the forever existence of being without his presence. And at some point, we will live with the position we've chosen. Problem is, we don't know when that point will come. And maybe someone is here in the room, and maybe you come here because your spouse wants you to come here. And you honor them, and you come. Or maybe, maybe you're a young person, and you come with your parents and you know some of the stuff about it, but you know in your heart that you are not all in. You know that he is not the king of your life. The thing in this story is that the oil can't be shared. We are each eternally responsible for what we do with the voice of truth as it calls out to us. And if he calls out to you today, say yes to him. You can say yes today. He's already paid the price. He's purchased us with his blood on the cross. And all we need to do is say, would you forgive me for walking my own way? Would you fill the empty cup of my life? God, I want your presence with me doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. doesn't mean you're never going to mess up. But it means you will be ready to face whatever comes, come what may, come sickness, come hardship, come trial, come war. He will be with you from here until eternity. You think Jesus could have described his return in any number of ways. He uses a seven-day party. And I thought about that this week, and I thought, if the same God who hangs the stars in the sky, the same God who, who paints a sunrise and sunset, the same God who's given us our taste buds and, and created all of the tastes that light them up. He's made all our pleasure senses and music and mountains and everything that is to be delighted in. If that God says he's throwing a party, I think it's worth it for you and I to take some time 
to ask and say, is there anyone in my life that I need to invite? Who do you need me to invite, Lord? 